Hey, I'm Kevin with AGL, and this is James from Oak Mountain Hobbies, and we're out here today to maiden these two aircraft to finish up our scratch build series. So during our series, you saw me build this high wing trainer, install the electronics, all all that minus the foam came from Oak Mountain Hobbies, and uh, we assembled it, put all the electronics in, and then you saw me do the programming video with the uh, Spectrum DX6 uh, that Oak Mountain Hobbies lent us. Um, and then you saw Brandon build this one. This is the mid-wing Edge 540. It's a little more aerobatic plane. Uh, the, the high wing trainer is great for people just getting into it because it should be a very docile flyer. It's a little smaller. It's easier to throw in the car. The Edge is a, a little bit larger. Uh, we have very, very similar uh, electronics uh, built out with this airplane. Uh, the electronics package for both aircraft to get them flyable, battery, motor, ESC, three servos, and receiver is about $150. Uh, so we were surprised by that. But uh, if you get it from the local hobby shop, you don't have to wait a couple weeks and uh, you don't have to pay for shipping. Right. So if you want to get the thing and go build it in an afternoon, then you can go over there and get those stuff. And if you want to hang out for a little bit and uh, practice your building, then you, know, you can spend the money overseas and build a very, very similar thing. Um, the Edge 540, uh, you saw Brandon build, he assembled, uh, he installed the electronics, and we did the programming on the Futaba. So we can have a simple four channel programming video on the Spectrum that you saw when we did the high wing, and a simple four channel uh, programming video for the Futaba. But guys, uh, this is the 14SG. The protocol is also the same for the 8FG, and I think the, uh, the 8J. Not 100% sure. But, uh, so that, that goes from scratch build to programming to flying. And that's what we're going to do today, James. All right. Uh, we're going to, neither one of these aircraft have been in the air. Might they, be exciting. <laughs> they got a little color on them last <laughs> night. Uh, and uh, we're out here at West Shelby on a very overcast day. Uh, the grass is tall and pretty wet. So uh, we have foam airplanes. So uh, we have to be a little mindful of our landing and hopefully we won't end up in that tall grass out there because then we're just going to get soaking wet. Uh, the hay guy has not come to cut the grass yet so it's uh, looking a little bit like a jungle over there. But one nice thing about the overcast day is keeping the sun beat down a little bit. It's a little humid but there's almost no wind which is great for going up and trimming out your aircraft and that's what we're going to do here in just a second. We're going to throw these things in the air, get them up two mistakes high, trim them out and let you know how they fly. Uh, we're going to do some stall uh, characteristics and things like that so that you can find out what to expect when you assemble your aircraft and take it out to the park or wherever you go to fly. So let's get to it. All right, just uh, go ahead. All right, so um, we've uh, got our batteries installed and did a little pre-flight and uh, we're ready to get these guys up and trim them out. So we're going to take it two mistakes high and Get the airplanes trimmed out. So to be an overcast day, I really feel like I'm squinting a lot to be able to see this airplane. Uh, it's a lot brighter than I initially expected. Um, so mine is playing need a little bit of left aileron trim and uh, actually a little bit of down because my airplane is just slightly tail heavy. Uh, but that's fine for an aerobatic plane as long as you're uh, prepared for it. It'll help it do maneuvers and things like that a little better. Uh, what about yours, James? How's the, the high wing flying? Yeah, mine had a whole lot of lifts. I've put uh, about nine or ten clicks of down elevator in it and it seems to be flying pretty good now. Good. All right, this is a great little trainer. It's nice that you can build a plane with Dollar Tree foam, so the airframe really doesn't cost you that much, and you can get all of your parts here locally from Oak Mountain Hobbies. So it's just a, it's just a fun little airplane. If you crash it, you can reuse the electronics, put it in another bird, and you're back in business probably the next day.
flying this one completely with power off and it's just slowly coming down very easy very nice I don't see a, a dip wing or anything like most planes tend to do when they stall it's, stall characteristics on this plane are just fabulous for a trainer yeah, and, and I just stalled out the edge and I'm gonna do it again um, it tries to nose over just a little bit so if you hold some up elevator you can actually do a maneuver called the the elevator all the way down to the ground and you can land it that way you can see the wings rocking just a little bit as they start to stall and then uh, it just kind of noses over a little bit now for a power I'm going to get a little bit altitude and we'll do a power on stall uh, which the Edge 540 should have enough performance that it shouldn't do a power on stall it should just hover and uh, that's pretty much all it's going to do is try to hover I'm not doing a very good job of keeping the tail under it in that hover but uh a power on stall it's not going to be able to do but for the power off it's just kind of nosing over a little bit and you hold just a little bit up elevator and it'll make it really easy to land it just floats right on in one neat thing about the edge is as you progress you can start to do some little tricks and things some knife edge uh, some fairly quick rolls and loops uh, I'm actually doing a little 3D with this trainer. It's really fun. <laughs> yeah, James. <laughs> James is over holding a hover uh, with a slightly overpowered high wing trainer. Um, yeah, I was going to ask you if it was uh, willing to loop or roll or anything like that. And, uh, the roll is not that great. The yeah. loops are pretty nice. Good. So we can, even with the high wing trainer, uh, we can just have a nice little park flyer. We just folded a wing. Yeah, I was uh, almost crashed mine. <laughs> <laughs> While watching James, uh, one thing about the high wing is it did not have a carbon fiber spar. Um, Be sure you get your carbon fiber spar at Oak Mountain Hobbies. Yeah, well, <laughs> the plans didn't really call for it. It just called for some tape, and the, the way that that wing was reinforced, it, it's not really built to do some of the 3D stuff that we were putting it through. Now you tell me. Yeah, but um, <laughs> it, it's meant to be just a docile park flyer. Uh, but another reason for doing that, we can show the durability oh. of the aircraft and how easy it is to repair it and that all of the electronics should be fine and we'll be able to put them in another aircraft or just fix that one. Yeah, probably the only thing we're going to have to do with that airplane is just redo the wing. And uh, that will take only about an hour and we put that aileron servo back in there and it should be good to go. Or you can actually you can fly the plane without the aileron servo since we did that mod to it. Um, and, and just fly it with uh, with the tail feathers, and uh, it won't loop. It, it may still loop, but it won't roll. And uh, as it starts to bank over to one side, then that under camber wing should level it right back out. Mm -hmm. But uh, just don't we'll, over to your aircraft, is that? Yeah, it? don't don't uh, exceed your maneuvering speed. Uh, we'll land the the edge real quick, and we'll walk over and examine the damage uh, with the folded wing. Uh, what are you moving for, James? That's perfect. <laughs> so as you can see, the plane is okay. All the servos, receiver, even the even the motor seems to be okay. So um, I think we just put a carbon fiber spar in there, like we probably should have had in the first place, and it'll be okay. Yeah. Um, yeah. I I would see no problem with still flying this airplane. And uh, you know what James said. You know we what we can do is just go get. A small carbon fiber rod, and uh, because it's just going to be a nice little park flyer, a little beater, nothing too fancy, and uh, just carve a little bitty hole right here, and uh, be careful not to hit any, any of the, uh, the wiring coming out of the aileron servo, and take some hot glue, uh, which we use for assembly, and just glue that that spar along the bottom of the wing. It's a little floppy, but uh, with the, you know, the CF rod going through there, then uh, we shouldn't have any problems. Yeah, it's Dollar Tree foam. So, what do you expect? So what? You but know, it makes a great airplane. We'll go spend another three dollars and we build a whole other airplane exactly. and uh, we're still good to go. And and this one has the power to get you out of trouble. Right. Which I mean, we can hover with this thing. So it's got plenty of power with this this little setup. So You know, the thing I like, we, we lost a, a prop and a carbon fiber rod. I mean, literally under five bucks. And we're flying again. And we're flying again. Yeah. So. And one other thing, you know, if you went out and you bought like a little cub or something like that from from the hobby shop and because you wanted that that new airplane and you want it to look scale and you're super amped about it and you go out to your local park or something you fly it and you crash it 
you, you get a little depressed, man. That, that was probably a $150 investment or something like that. Well, guess what? As long as the electronics are still good, your yeah. servos and things like that, rip them out of that airplane, go to the Dollar Tree, mm -hmm. pull the plans off. And we've got these on our, on our YouTube channel where we built this uh, airplane. Links to all that stuff. And use the electronics out of that airplane to build this one. If you strip out a servo, then you can go over there to Oak Mountain and get another servo and shove it in there and you're good to go. Keep flying, keep trying. Uh, try out some different trainers. There's all kinds of different forums and places like that where you can uh, download different plans for different planes and try them out. Well, that's been the maiden of, of our, and the end of our scratch build series. Uh, we, we downloaded plans, assembled planes, programmed the radios, came out here to West Shelby on this overcast day, made in these two aircraft, and uh, they both flew. They both flew pretty daggum well. Yeah, really uh, the, the high wing trainer, even with the, the small power package that we picked out for it, had amazing performance. I mean, we could, James was hovering this thing over here, oh, yeah. and maybe doing a little more 3D than it was designed for. <laughs> And we folded up a wing and crashed it, but it's a very simple repair. Uh, it looks almost as good as new, and guess what? It's $3 in foam, yeah. so who cares about that? All the electronics and everything are good, so we're good to go. The, uh, the Edge 540 is flying really nicely. Um, it might be just a tick under propped for the motor that we have on here. Uh, so we may try propping it up just a little bit, see if we can increase that performance a little and uh, be able to do some of the 3D maneuvering. But as far as having another park flyer, and just kind of poking around and starting to progress a little bit from the high wing to a mid wing and learning some different things is still a great setup. Great airplane. Um, but we certainly want to thank James for coming out and help, helping us play Enjoyed with our it. toys today and uh, only slightly injuring one of the toys. Um, if you get a chance, if you're in the area and uh, you want to get this power package, you can always go by uh, James Deploy here at Elk Mountain Hobbies. Uh, you can check out this plane. It's going to be sitting on a shelf for in a closet depending on where they want to put it <laughs> and, uh, i'm sure we'll pretty it back up a little bit uh maybe we can install that carbon fiber spar so we can fly it in the parking lot yeah put a new prop on it that'd be fun it, it's good to go and uh, uh certainly thanks to you guys for checking out our channel uh we just hit a, over 500 subscribers like 504 wow. out last check so i'm super psyched about that that's great uh we have a 50 dollars gift certificate for a, a lucky guy uh Richard something another. Uh, I message you Richard so if you're checking out this video you need to message me back so we can give you that code and uh, is, for every 500 subscribers we get we're going to give away uh, an even larger and larger amount uh, either a Google Play or Apple uh, gift card depending on your, your type of device that you like. And be sure and like our store on Facebook Oak Mountain Hobbies and we also have a website but uh, the, the Facebook page is how we kind of communicate with you guys. So anytime we get a sale or a new product, we try to post it there first. Yeah, and if you guys can think of any other demo videos or reviews or things like that, you go to Oak Mountain and you see some cool stuff, but you don't want to buy it right away, make sure to let Dave, the owner, uh, know in person or on Facebook. And uh, so maybe we can talk Dave into letting us do another review yeah. of that, that product and give you a good idea of what to expect before you throw down the money on it. That's right. But uh, from James at Oak Mountain and, and Kevin and Brandon from AGL, thank you so much for checking out our channel. And uh, make sure to like and subscribe. And uh, we'll see you next time. Start talking, monkeys. Okay. Hey, this is Kevin, and or we can try again. <laughs> Hi, try again. How you doing? Nice Hi. to meet you. I'm try again. It's like short round. <laughs> <laughs>
because he's trying to catch us saying something stupid on tape. It's he's just standing there. Brandon, he's just standing there staring at us with his mouth resting on the back of the camera. How does that foam smell, Brandon? Like butter. <laughs>